What we're here to talk about today is uh, your mom had a stroke and has aphasia. So can you tell us a little bit about what happened during her stroke? Well, she's 72. She's been... So the problems you were having before you came here, you kind of outlined where she didn't have the awareness of what she was saying, kind of wasn't what she thought she was saying. Widowed for 24 years, lives alone, fiercely independent, takes care of her own house, yard, uh, manages real estate that the family owns. And I live about 30 minutes away and talk to her usually every day. So what, this particular morning I called her and she answered the phone and she sounded very, very, very tired. She couldn't get her words together and she's diabetic so immediately I thought maybe she was having a, a low blood sugar. And uh, you know, at first I started, are you did, you, did I wake you up? Are you tired? And then I realized there was something wrong. So I called 911 and my brother lives in town with her so he went over to check on her. And by the time they got her to the hospital, her stroke was over three hours old. So, you know, we proceeded from there. They, we live in a small town, so they transferred her to the larger city hospital. She was only in the hospital a week. And then we transferred her to the rehab that was connected to the hospital. She was there for seven days also, still couldn't speak at all. <laughs> you know, she could, she could answer questions, but not reliably. She just had a few words, but they didn't necessarily mean anything. But, you know, they said, she's done, she has to leave rehab. And I said, well, she's not done, she can't speak, she can't be alone, she can't call 911, how can she be done? And they said that even though she had weak, right side weakness right after her stroke, she had started building that strength back up and she could walk and they would take her down to rehab in a wheelchair, but then they would let her walk. So since she did not need physical or occupational therapy, they would not let her stay in the rehab facility. So they sent us home, and I went, I went to her house because she, she lives alone, and she couldn't be alone. And they started, or she started going to therapy three days a week for one hour, and where she can't drive. So I just, I stayed there with her. And because her physical came back pretty well, it actually probably worked better for us to get kicked out of rehab because she gardens, we started working in her courtyard immediately, she started doing a lot of physical things. So then her right side really came back a lot stronger. She still doesn't have a good feeling in it and, and her arm stays bruised because she runs into things. And, but, but it's, you know, she can get out and she can do things. So. We were very pleased with the rehab she was getting. The speech therapist was wonderful. And we would go places. She didn't want to see her friends, but we would go places in my area, my neighborhood, and we could shop and we could go to my church and she didn't have to talk to anybody. And she was fine with that. She didn't want to have to talk with anybody. Well, the problems you were having before you came here, you kind of outlined where she didn't have the awareness of what she was saying, kind of wasn't what she thought she was saying. Or, I mean, has the aphasia affected uh, not only her life, but your life as well, being somebody who's there caretaking most of the time? Well, <laughs> that was kind of my question to the insurance company. What do you do with these people if mm -hmm. they don't have someone who can put their life on hold for three months? Mm -hmm. I have been with her almost 24-7 for the last three months. If my brother hasn't been with her, I have been with her. And my daughter's home from college, so... She stays with my mom when I have errands to run. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had therapist appointment three times a week. We've had lots of doctor's appointments. And she has not been able to take, or especially at first, hopefully when we go back, she will be able to take care of herself. Mm -hmm. But when we got home, she had cognitive issues. A lot of things she was kind of hiding from me. And I didn't realize it was a problem in the hospital. I thought she understood more than she did. Mm -hmm. But then when we got home that first morning, she couldn't remember how to make coffee in her individual coffee maker that she's been using for years and got really upset and really frustrated. So being home, we had to relearn a lot of things. And even putting on makeup, she was, she was putting um, um, lipstick, like an eyeliner or a lip pencil, she was putting up here. And so I ended up 
cleaning out her makeup so she had one of each item, you know, really trying to simplify things for her because she did want to be independent. Mm -hmm. And she got very angry with me if I tried to do too much for her. And so I think someone who didn't have, someone who could put their life on hold a little bit and take care of them, I don't know how they would manage. But I do feel like she's been fortunate in that she's had me around, she's had my daughters in and out, she's had my brother in and out, she's had a lot of stimulation, a lot of talking, and I feel like some people don't have that. So as a caregiver, what have you learned about aphasia while you've been here, maybe from other caregivers or from the staff or even from your mom? Um, oh, it's very, very frustrating. And um, I haven't had to deal with the physical issues as much, but I think that creates a whole other very difficult situ situation. But um, I think that you know there there are smart people in there, and they don't want to be talked down to. And it's very difficult for people in the general public to know how to communicate with them and how to talk to them without offending them. This, sad thing is you look at these people and you don't know that their life was normal six months mm -hmm. ago. So they're still adjusting to it not being normal and then dealing with the fact it will never be the same. I mean, one day she came home, we, we've been writing thank you notes to her friends mm -hmm. and I've been writing it and she's been copying it and she said, I'm done. I'm not going to be able to do these things without help. And hopefully she will, you know, she'll be able to do the things she needs to do. But it's terrifying. What they're dealing with emotionally is terrifying.